So good morning friends I have shared my screen is it visible to you yes sir yes so till now we have completed with almost the entire unit that is we have finished with the mesh analysis node analysis then superposition theorem thevenin's theorem norton's theorem and maximum power transfer theorem so entire dc analysis we have completed we have seen all the types of problems whatever possible okay so i hope you will means you have already understood the problems how to tackle all the problems and if not you can ask even today or later on also okay so just for a brief revision i have taken out two problems two numericals which will cover the entire portion of this uh, unit 1 okay and uh, uh, only remaining portion of this uh, unit is our ac analysis ac analysis using mesh so only for mesh analysis we have to do ac analysis okay so let us begin our discussion with this numerical one solve the network using all the techniques and find out the current flowing through this 140 ohm resistance this i we want to find okay so first let us tackle this problem using mesh analysis so as you know in mesh analysis we uh, we can see here three meshes are there so we can assume three mesh currents as i1 i2 and i3 assume all the currents i1 i2 i3 in clockwise direction so we will assume this i1 i2 i3 in clockwise direction as by observation you can see mesh 1 and 2 are forming super mesh so we will go for mesh 3 so apply kvl for mesh 3 first so applying kvl for mesh 3 we will get a equation as 720 minus 150 i3 equal to zero. So this is one equation I have got. So I'll mark this equation as equation number one. Now one and two loop or mesh they are forming a super mesh because this current source is common between these two meshes. Okay. So we have to we want two equations. So one equation you can get it from. this current equation now this 12 ampere current it is flowing in the direction of i2 so i2 and 12 ampere directions are same so i'll take i2 minus i1 is equal to 12 ampere so i2 minus i1 is 12 this is my second equation so i mark it as second equation and third equation you can get it from this by applying kvl for this super mesh so after applying this kvl to super mesh what will it result 480 minus 100 i1 minus 140 i2 minus 720 equal to 0 so this will be the equation after applying kvl for this super mesh now i have got three equations 1 2 3 and three unknowns so i can solve this three equations and three unknowns so i'll get value of i1 as minus 8 ampere i2 as 4 ampere and i3 as 4.8 ampere now my interested current was the current flowing through this 140 ohm resistor and it was the current flowing through mesh 2 so that was i2 so current flowing through 140 ohm resistance is nothing but i2 and its value is coming as 4 ampere 
So I have solved this numerical by first method mesh analysis. Now let us start, and I have got the answer of current flowing through 142 ohm resistance as 4 ampere. Now the same problem you can tackle using node analysis. So for node analysis, I will redraw the circuit here, and I will see here two nodes are there. One this first, this second. So these two non-reference junctions are there and one reference junction is always there at ground. So the potentials at non-reference nodes, they are I have assumed it as V1 and V2 and the reference node voltage is V0 equal to 0 volt. Okay. Now first step is you have to assume all the currents in all the junctions they are flowing in outward direction. So assuming all the currents are moving away from these junctions, this junction 1 also and 2 also. So I have assumed all the currents I1, I2, I3, I4, I5 and I6. So these currents I have assumed and apply now KCL at junction 1 and then at junction 2. So if I will apply KCL at junction 1, it will result me I1 plus I2 plus I3 equal to 0 because all the currents are moving away and summation of all the currents in same direction equal to summation of all the currents in opposite direction that is KCL. So in opposite direction there is no current in the junction so only one direction so I assumed it as I1 plus I2 plus I3 equal to 0. So that is KVL at junction 1. Now the only task remaining is find out value of I1, I2 and I3. So value of I1 you can find by the potential difference and uh, divided by resistance. So V1 minus this 480 minus 0 or V0 divided by 100. So that is V1 minus 480 by 100. This is value of I1. Then I2, no need to calculate because I2 in the path of I2, there is a current source of 12 ampere and it is since it is flowing in opposite direction to that of I2, I will take it as I2 is equal to minus 12 ampere. So I2 value I have got it as minus 12. Now I3, I3 value you can find it out from V1 minus V2, then minus you can write V0 divided by this 150 or it is sorry uh, it is v1 minus v2 directly resistance is given to the u it is 140 ohm so v1 minus v2 divided by 140 will be this current i3 so i have substituted values of i1 i2 i3 and only two unknowns are there i have rearranged the terms that is uh, or you can substitute value of V2 here directly because by observation you can see for this V2 this only one voltage source is connected over here of 720 volt. So V2 value you can directly say it is 720 volts. So another equation no need to write, no need to apply KCL at this junction because V2 value directly you can get it as 720 volts and as V2 is 720 you can substitute the value of V2 in this equation so that it will be only one variable equation that is V1 and all the constants. So you can rearrange the terms and find out value of V1 and uh, value of V1 uh, it is coming out as How much is V1 value? Yes. So after solving this equation, I have got the value of V1 as 1280 volts. I have substituted value of V2 here and then uh, as usual I have taken LCM uh, LCM is 1400, then multiply numerator by 14, 1410 and 
all the v1 terms are clubbed together it has given me 24 volt and all the constant on another side it is this value and then to have taken 24 on this side so v1 value is 1280 volts okay so current flowing through this 140 ohm resistor it is nothing but i3 that is v1 minus v2 divided by 140 now i have got values of v1 and v2 both v1 is 1280 And V2 has 720. So I have taken ratio of this, I have substituted the values and got the value of I3 as 4 ampere. So the current flowing to 140 ohm resistor is 4 ampere. It is same as that of first method. So in uh, using both the methods, superposition, uh, sorry, uh, means uh, mesh analysis and node analysis. Both the methods have resulted me same value of current. now i will try to apply superposition theorem so if you will apply superposition theorem what it states if there are n number of sources one source you operate at a time and find out current flowing through that particular resistance and then club all the currents that is sum algebraic sum of all the currents uh, when independent sources are operating and uh, that summation will give you the value of current flowing through that particular resistance when all the sources are operating simultaneously so that is superposition theorem so uh, there are three sources two voltage sources and one current source so first i have used uh, um, i have applied only 480 voltage source so only 480 voltage source is operating when both the other sources i want to turn them off for current source you have to make it open and for voltage source you have to make it short so this current source i have opened and this voltage source i have shorted now uh, as there is a short across this 150 ohm resistor this resistance will go out that means it is only a shorted path here so this is simply one loop 480 volt is applied across 100 and 140 ohm resistor in series so i can find out current easily by ohms law this voltage 480 volt divided by 100 plus 140 will give me value of this current let us say this is i1 or i dash you can assume uh, current flowing through this resistance as i dash i double dash i triple dash and i nth dash for all ten sources and then at the end you can club all these algebraically i dash i1 dash i, uh, i double dash and so or you can assume i1 i2 i3 and then you can club them all so it's one and the same thing so i have found out value of i1 as 2 ampere and i have mark direction here from it is flowing from left to right so i have mark here arrow because uh, any uh, source may give you uh, the current flowing in opposite direction so at the end i have to make algebraic summation so for making algebraic summation i should know it's a vector quantity so i should know whether uh, its direction also that's why i have mark here direction also and i have applied now second source so only 12 ampere current source is operating so both the voltage sources i have shorted and only 12 ampere current source is operating as it is this is shorted this resistance will go out so it is only a network having a 12 ampere as a uh, total current and it is distributed in two parts uh, as one and two one flowing through 100 ohm and another flowing through uh, 140 ohm so this is a current divider arrangement so you can find out directly this uh, current flowing through this 140 ohm resistor using a current division rule that is the total current into opposite branch resistance divided by sum of these two so you can find out e i2 as 12 ampere total current into opposite branch resistance that is 100 ohm divided by sum of these two that is 100 plus 140 so this is giving me 5 ampere current and it is also flowing from left to right so i have marked here direction of this also from left to right 
Now only one source is remaining, seven hundred and twenty volt source. So that is operating third time, and other sources I have switched off. This first voltage source I have shorted, and this current source I have opened. Now this seven twenty volt battery, it is connected. This is one path. So simply you can apply um, Ohm's law to this to find value of this current I three. So that is seven twenty. Divided by hundred and hundred forty summation. So seven twenty divided by one forty plus hundred will be value of I three, and it is coming out as three ampere. Now keep in mind the direction of I three is now from right to left. Okay, so that I have marked it on this, and then current flowing to hundred and forty ohm resistor using superposition theorem means when all the sources are operating. At a time, that current will be summation of algebraic summation of I1 plus I2 plus I3. So I have taken here uh, the vector notations of all currents: 2 ampere with this direction, left to right; 5 ampere with this direction, left to right; and 3 ampere from right to left. Now I can take uh, positive sign to any of this direction. So I have taken it uh, by logically. You can see. This summation is more than this, so that's why I have taken this direction from left to right as positive. So 2 ampere plus 5 ampere plus and 3 ampere will be minus. So 2 plus 5 minus 3 equal to 4 ampere in this direction. So 4 ampere current is flowing from left to right. So the same answer I have got by third method also 4 ampere. Now I go for fourth method. Thevenin's theorem. So in Thevenin's theorem, what Thevenin's theorem states? First step of Thevenin's theorem is open circuit the particular load resistance. So whatever uh, load resistance is there, that is 140 ohm resistor, that I open first. So making open circuit at across this load, I uh, remove that load resistance. After removing that resistance, I have to find the Voltage Thevenin's voltage across this points that is from A to B that is V A minus V B I want to find okay so that is the Thevenin's voltage and for Thevenin's resistance I am uh, removing all the sources and by looking through these two terminals I will find the equivalent resistance of this entire network that is the Thevenin's resistance. So find Thevenin's resistance, find Thevenin's voltage, and then draw Thevenin's equivalent circuit to uh, voltage source Thevenin voltage source in series with Thevenin's resistance and in series with the load resistance, and you can find current through that load resistance is equal to Thevenin's voltage divided by Thevenin's resistance plus uh, load resistance. Okay. So first I have gone for uh, finding RTH. So I remove all the sources. So while removing sources, again the condition is same. Voltage sources I have to short circuit. Current source I have to open circuit. So I have made short here. So this resistance is of no use. So there is only you can see only one resistance of 100 ohm in this path. So RTH is directly 100 ohm. Now to find VTH. Uh, I have um, removed this resistance and I have marked this terminal as positive, this as negative. So this is A point and B point, and I will find out this uh, Thevenin's voltage. Now, for finding Thevenin's voltage, you can use any of the method. You can apply this KVL for this particular loop, and you can find out the Thevenin's voltage. That is, you can say. This is 480 minus 100 into this water current. Then, uh, sorry, plus because uh, uh, this 12 ampere current is flowing in this direction. If you are assuming this current direction, then you have to take it as minus uh, plus. Or otherwise, if you are finding this current by a uh, mesh analysis, you can assume this direction. You will find that current is flowing in this direction. So again. This drop will be in opposite direction, so it will give you negative sign, and it will result the same answer. Okay, so.
so you can apply kvl for this particular loop 480 480 volt uh, plus algebraic summation of this voltage drop minus this vth minus this 720 amp volt and this or you can find uh, you can apply kvl to this loop also this from this a terminal you can move to this 100 ohm resistor this battery this 150 ohm resistor and back to this so you can apply uh, means you can move by any way from this point to this point only thing you cannot move through this uh, current source path because there is no resistance offered by this particular path so only find out the path in which voltage source or resistances are there then you find drops across these and find out this or here i can find it easy that if i take here v1 voltage i will find and v2 voltage i know if i will apply nodal analysis i know v2 voltage is directly 720 volt i know this voltage source is connected over here from ground to this v2 point so v2 voltage is directly 720 volt i know if i will be able to find out this particular voltage then i'll take simply this voltage minus this voltage will be the voltage across this so for finding v1 this loop is there so in that 12 ampere current is flowing so this 12 ampere current will result drop across this 100 ohm as 12 into 100 so that is 1200 volt will be voltage drop across this resistance with this polarity this terminal as positive and this as negative so what will be value of this particular point or v1 voltage it will be this you can say 480 plus this drop will be v1 so v1 will be 480 volt plus 1200 that is 1680 volts so i got v1 value and v2 value so this thevenin voltage will be v1 minus V2, so 1680 minus 720 will give me 960 volts. So I have got this value of VTH also. So VTH is with you, RTH is with you. Now draw the equivalent circuit, thevenin's equivalent circuit. So I have drawn it here, thevenin's voltage, thevenin's resistance, and in series with this load resistance. Now my task is very easy to find this IL as VTH upon RTH plus RL. substitute the values and find out the value of current and this is also giving me the result of 4 ampere so i have got the um, current flowing through this load resistance that is uh, 140 ohm resistor as 4 ampere by all the methods till now now only one method is remaining norton's theorem so i will find out the norton's equivalent and find out the current through that resistance so for norton's theorem find out norton's resistance and find out short circuit current across that load that is the norton's current and then draw equivalent circuit of norton's that is norton's current source in parallel with norton's resistance in parallel with the load resistance and this is simply a current divider arrangement so by finding the current you can find the current through the load resistance by uh, with the help of that current division rule that is total current which is nothing but the norton's current into opposite branch resistance which is nothing but norton's resistance divided by sum of both the resistances that is norton resistance and uh, the load resistance okay so first step in norton's theorem i have removed this load resistance and i have created here short circuit and uh, okay i have found out first thevenin's resistance because it is already i have found it calculated in uh, previous uh, step so by opening this terminal and switching off all the supplies uh, or the voltages or sources i have seen through this terminal and found out the thevenin's resistance it is same as that of previous so it is uh, giving me 100 ohm resistor then for second step to find this norton's current i have opened this resistance first load resistance and i have created short circuit across this so i have shorted these two terminals i have marked this direction of in and let us say this direction is positive i will say whatever i'll get so this is the direction of in 
and then you solve this i can see here it is a mesh problem uh, having three meshes so you can solve it by mesh analysis and uh, this norton current it is nothing but i2 so i am interested to find i2 current so you can apply mesh analysis i uh, assume three currents mesh current i1 i2 and i3 in clockwise direction i can see here this mesh 1 and 2 uh, current source is common between these two so it is forming a super mesh so i can get one equation as current equation i2 minus i1 equal to 12 ampere and then second equation for second equation i will apply kvl for the super mesh so it is giving me 480 minus 100 i1 minus 720 equal to 0 so from this you can find the value of i1 and i2 and uh, you can apply kvl for this third mesh also but uh, it is of no use because we are interested to find only i2 so i2 is nothing but your in so um, we have used these two equations from this uh, second equation of super uh, mesh um, i can find the value of i1 directly and substitute this value of i1 in equation 1 so that i can directly get, get value of i2 so i have got the value of i2 as this 9.6 ampere then i have uh, drawn the norton's equivalent circuit this Norton's current source in parallel with this uh, Norton's resistance and in parallel with this load. And uh, by parallel uh, or current division rule, I have found out the value of IL as 4 ampere. So by all the methods, I have got the same value of load current. So means all the methods are working properly and you can solve any problem by any method. Even the last problem, revision of last uh, theorem is uh, you can also do. Uh, that is the maximum power transfer theorem. In ma maximum power transfer theorem, when maximum power uh, will uh, uh, transfer will take place, when this RL will become equal to RTS, that is 100. And you can find out the maximum power using maximum power is equal to VTH square upon 4 times RTH. You have got both the values of VTH and RTH, so you can find out maximum power here. Okay, so that's all about the revision of your first unit. And I have simulated the same circuit in uh, our uh, uh, that um, software, and uh, I have got the same value of current flowing through this 140 ohm resistor. It is giving me 4 ampere value. Okay. So that was one type of problem and second type of problem at the most can be having a dependent source. So I have taken this problem as this is a dependent source. It is a voltage dependent voltage source as I have told, uh, told you already as there are polarities in this diamond block. If polarities are there, it is a voltage source. If current direction is shown, it is a current source. And if voltage is uh, written outside this with some relation, then it is voltage dependent that source. And if current relation is given, current dependent that particular source. Okay, so here it is a voltage dependent voltage source. Okay, so um, uh, mesh analysis, I can see here two meshes, mesh one and mesh two. Again, I uh, assumed the direction of uh, clockwise direction as positive direction. I can see here there is a uh, current uh, source common between the two meshes. So it is a problem of super mesh again. So I will uh, write current equation. One uh, current equation I2 minus I1 as 2 ampere and applying KVL for this super mesh. So after applying KVL for this super mesh, I am getting another equation and uh, one for dependent source, uh, the relation between this and this, that is, uh, it is 4 times V1. So what is the relation of V1 with this I1? That we have to find. So V1, you can see it is plus terminal here and negative terminal here. And current is entering in exactly opposite direction to this. So the drop across this resistance will be I1 into 1 in opposite direction. So V1 is equal to minus of 
I1. So this is one more equation. So you have got three equations or you can substitute the value of V1 in this equation. So it will be equation of I1 and I2. And this is also equation of I1 and I2. Two equations, two unknowns. You can solve them and find out the value of current. So that is coming out as 2 ampere. Now for node analysis, you can see here there is only one node as VA. So at this particular node, uh, one non-reference node. So I have assumed its voltage as VA. And as here V1 is already there, so I have taken it as VA. Uh, so that there should not be any confusion between V1 and this V1. Okay. So this VA voltage of non-reference voltage source, um, um, uh, voltage uh, junction, and this uh, reference junction voltage is 0 or V0. Then apply KCL at this particular, first assume all the currents are moving away from this, and then summation of these currents will be equal to 0. Find out the values of currents, and substitute the values of currents in terms of this voltage, that is I1 as VA minus 10 divided by this resistance will be value of this. Current source is there, so no need to value, uh, find out value of I2, it is directly minus 2. And for uh, this I3, it is VA plus 4 V1 minus 0 divided by 5 will be this. Now substitute this, then rearrange the terms, substitute value of V1, uh, V1 as VA minus 10, put this in equation 1, and this you can calculate. Simplify, you will get the value of VA, V1, and you can find out value of current, and it is coming out as 2 ampere. Then superposition theorem, dependent source you have to keep as it is, and only this independent sources you have to operate one at a time, and then find out the currents uh, flowing through this particular resistance by operating one source at a time. So I have found out this, if only 10 volt current sources or voltage source is operating, then uh, I have found the value of I1 as 1 ampere. If only this current source is operating, I have found the value of uh, this V1 as 1 volt and from this I can substitute the value uh, in I3. That is I3 equal to V1 plus 4 V1 divided by 5 will be the current flowing through this and that is giving me this value 1 ampere, uh, 1 ampere again and then using superposition theorem I can add algebraically these two currents to get the same answer of 2 ampere. Now since dependent source is there for Norton's theorem, Thevenin's theorem and even your maximum power transfer theorem you need to find RTH and for dependent voltage source or current source, if dependent sources are there, then for finding RTH, you need to find, means you cannot replace this uh, sources and you cannot find the resistance, equivalent resistance. So for this purpose, you have to find the open circuit voltage and short circuit current. So means you have to find if dependent sources are there, you have to find Thevenin's voltage and Thevenin's uh, Norton's current. So if you will uh, keep this terminal open once, find out open circuit voltage, short circuit this and find out the short circuit current. Once open circuit voltage and short circuit current are known to you, you can easily find out RTH by taking ratio of this VOC and ISC. So I have found out VOC by uh, simply you can see here. Um, uh, apply here KVL for this particular loop and you can find out this particular loop you can apply KVL and you can find out the value of V1 or uh, VOC. So this VOC value I am getting it as 20 volt. After finding uh, this mesh analysis you can apply and using this mesh analysis you can find the short circuit current. I, can, I have found it as 4 ampere. Then for RTH VOC upon ISC that is coming as 5 ohm and then draw equivalent of Thevenin's and equivalent of Norton's and then you can find the current by Thevenin's theorem or by Norton's theorem and it is coming as same. 
even you can find out the maximum power transfer and what is the value of maximum power using this so the only thing you have to keep in mind that if dependent sources are present in the network then to find rth you cannot replace the network and find out uh, equivalent resistance you have to find out thevenin's voltage and means open circuit voltage and short circuit current or you have to find thevenin's voltage and norton's current and take ratio of thevenin's voltage and norton's current to give you rth i hope uh, you have uh, i have completed uh, tried to complete uh, the revision of entire uh, unit of uh, first unit through these two problems आणि तुम्हाला ते आलेत का मला सांगा बरं समजलं आहे का तुम्हाला काय काय अडचण आहे का आय स्टॉप रेकॉर्डिंग फर्स्ट अँड अगेन टाइम इज 